we're back with another episode i i got i'm not even gonna cut i'm gonna cut through all the bs and go straight to the man because this is like christmas we have probably one of the greatest marketers of our generation one of the true geniuses mr tom kalinsky how are you I'm fine. Well, thank you for that kind introduction. I don't think I'm a genius of marketing, but it's nice of you to say it. <laughs> oh, listen, you're you're definitely a guru's guru. I've been a big fan of your work for years, and, and I know you're probably thinking, why the hell does this guy want to have me on his show? But listen, you're one of the all-time greats. Now, I, I just want you to, because the audience may not know a little bit about, about your history. Uh, at one point, I mean, you were essentially the man at Sega USA. Uh, what, what was that journey like, and is it surreal looking back at how many people have kind of put put so much weight on that yeah it, it, it is and i never expected to uh to end up in the video game industry you know i started at <laughs> mattel and i was a toy guy i was on barbie and hot wheels and helped create he-man and masters of the universe and those television shows and and then uh with a friend of mine bought matchbox toys out of bankruptcy in the uk and mm. turned it around and took it public in the new york in new york stock exchange and but i knew the chairman of of sega because he had asked me to uh, to uh, market the the 8-bit master system in europe because we had great distribution in europe and he wasn't happy with how it was going there and i took a look at it and remember from my mattel days i knew what in television looked like and mm -hmm. i kind of knew what uh, the nes looked like and i looked at the master system and i said it's not different enough for me to launch it in Europe. And so I, I turned him down anyway. So he remembered that and he tracked me down and said, well, I've now got this 16 bit machine and I think you're going to like it and come back to Japan with me and look at it. And so I did and I fell in love with it. Yeah. And so I never expected it, but I fell in love with it. It's a wild story. It's yeah, a wild it story, you know, how you slipped into it, but it makes logical sense. Does it shock you where the video game industry has gone since then? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, by the way, I'm still in touch with a lot of my old Sega colleagues. In fact, almost every week I, I speak sure. with one or two of them. And, you know, we reminisce back on, you know, when we kind of grew the Sega business to a billion and a half in the U.S. and we actually passed Nintendo in share of market and the whole video game market maybe was four four or five billion dollars back then sure today it's 180 billion dollars oh, it's easy, larger yeah. than the movie and music industries combined so yes i'm shocked at how how it's grown and how it's developed and and also how realistic all the uh, the games are now i mean you can't tell the difference between playing a video game and watching an nfl football game a hundred percent it's wild it's absolutely wild now you you obviously you know it's it's great to to reflect on on the past but i always loved your approach to getting into the big box stores and how you penetrated some of that market whether it was buying up roadway signs or everything else do you think in 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 marketing that's that's kind of one of the we haven't seen something like that since you know where somebody was trying to really crowbar their way into a a sector does it surprise you that we haven't seen it or is it just everybody's gotten too soft well, I think the other part of it is everything's done online now. Right. So the, the stores, the retail outlets just aren't that Im as important anymore. I don't want to say they're not important. They're still important, of course, but they're not that important. And so everybody's doing their marketing on online. And, and uh, you know, the, the, there's a whole blogger universe out there that's very important and podcasting. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, all the social sites. So, so it's just a different world. To today than it was back when I was doing those things. Yeah, I think it was it was such a you know an in your face approach of we're going to get in this space one way or the other, and you had to know that going into it, right? It was about getting eyeballs on, and those were the avenues that were available to you. That, that's right, and and one of the other things that doesn't get mentioned often, I'm kind of surprised at it because it really was important. You know, we we found a game player on almost every college campus in the United States and we'd recruit a good game player mm. and uh, and we'd give him a Sega Genesis and 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 send him games every week and say look we'll keep sending you stuff and pay you a little money but all you have to do is go plug into the local uh, sure. dormitory TV set and sit down there and play games for a while or the local fraternity and play games for a while and uh, 
that really worked. <laughs> yeah, no, it's probably the first influencer ever, right, Tom? Probably the That's first, right. you know, birth of the influencer right there, right before Twitch. And yes. so you were ahead of the curve. You guys just did a lot of stuff that was different. Were you ever scared when you were when you were laying out your marketing strategy, or was it like, you know, hey, we're going to do whatever it takes? I'm, I'm curious to know what ideas ended up on the scrap heap because it didn't look like many. Not not many, and I, I, no, I was never scared. I, I I always had a lot of confidence that something was going to work. One of the things we were trying was going to work, whether mm. it was whether it was doing a mall tour and comparing uh, the Genesis to the Super NES and and asking the players in the malls to tell us which they liked best or you know sponsoring rock concerts and setting up uh, genesis machines outside of rock concerts uh, all over the country or of course uh, of course doing very aggressive advertising and promotions and and uh, again often we compared ourselves to to nintendo and and usually won those comparisons which was obviously reassuring <laughs> mm. i try i try to explain to folks all the time uh coming from the marketing ranks in a very different industry that when you're looking at, at it can't be just about the product right it can never be just about the product how do you explain that or break that down to folks that want to make it about an apples to apples comparison it never is though right tom no, it it never is, and of course, a lot of it also was creating a personality for for the brand, and you know the the Sega does what Nintendo don't attitude. And welcome yeah. to the next level, and and creating a, a real personality for the brand, and and of course, our own character Sonic was terribly important, and sure, not not just as a product, but as a representation of the brand, sort of that smart aleck uh, teenager next door who gets in a lot of trouble but always ends up doing the right thing, and uh, you know. So a lot of that was uh, w was necessary. I wanted to uh, also, you guys were, you know, were the pioneers of getting, you know, the sports games out there into the into the ether and developing that. Uh, uh, I imagine you were sad to hear about John Madden's passing, and that oh, was something. Yeah. I mean, what what a guy, right? Oh yeah, and, and you know, and, and even though Madden was was brought up by Electronic Arts. Yeah. Uh, it's a long story, but we ended up very close to Electronic Arts. Mm -hmm. And one thing I probably am not supposed to say, but, you know, the, the Joe Montana football game was basically the Madden engine. Yes. And, and, and so for a while, we had two football games that, between the two of them, dominated mm -hmm. the marketplace. And for a while, I actually met uh, Joe Montana outsold Madden, but I had such great regard for, for Madden and for Electronic Arts. I mean, I don't know if we would have been as successful if it hadn't been for Electronic Arts bringing out John Madden football. And it was, it was amazing to see, you know, just he was somebody that just he didn't, he could market himself. His personality was the market. I mean, it just really was quite amazing. And then as the technology got better, it just it, it enhanced the game. But you're absolutely right. I mean, to have those two names around, it but sega did it better than anybody else when it came to sports games i mean there's there's no question about that in so many ways uh it was well, just I, I think you're right i mean i think our, our baseball game our nba basketball game uh fifa soccer was phenomenal mm -hmm. and uh, of course that was done uh, out of our office in in london but uh yeah the sports games really helped us build the build the business and and again remember the, the our strategy was to go after the older audience and so this really fit the older audience's psyche what do you see when you look out there today in the gaming space? What do you see? What type of, what, what do you, what goes through your head? Are you like, this has gotten crazy or. Well, I'm, I'm not, I'm not that involved anymore. You know, I, after Sega, I started doing a lot of educational uh, curriculum and software and tried to make education as fun and interesting as a video game. And to some degree succeeded, some degree didn't, but I, you know, certainly we built leapfrog to being one of the largest educational toy company in the world. And, and then I, I did some stuff with, with, uh, Blackboard and also Cambium Learning Group, where we were making curriculum, hopefully as fun and interesting as a, as a video game. So I, I don't really look at it that much anymore. I you got to shake your head, though. The realism of the fighting games is just astonishing <sighs> to me. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, you yeah. can't tell the difference between a movie and a video game these days. Um, 
Uh, so, I, you know, and, and I'm, I'm sort of sad to see what's happened with Activision Blizzard. Uh, that's a sad story. You know, they should have done a better job of, of managing themselves inside that company. Uh, and now they're sold to, to uh, Microsoft. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, I still am close to some of the old people from Electronic Arts. You know, uh, uh, I occasionally trip, trip Hawkins, uh, often uh, Larry Probst. I see Larry every now and then and then Bing Gordon every now and then so i've stayed close to some of those guys but not so much the rest of the industry frankly yeah i I imagine when you look out to it it's it's become like it's gone from a pond to an ocean and it's just too bizarre and and even for me i mean i'm a guy i mean look at i look at it and i'm like it's it's all a foreign language to me but i agree with you i mean i thought blizzard and in some of these different different folks had the world by the you know what's and and we've seen you know some different movement but i think I think it's fast becoming a trillion dollar industry as we see NFTs and other types of currencies come into play, especially with the app based games, Tom, it's crazy, huh? Yes. Well, and one of, of course, one of the real differences is remember back in the cartridge days when we wanted to change a game, we had to basically reprogram the whole cartridge, you know, now they just do it online and that you can add to the game. The game's never finished. It's never finished uh, uh, being developed. You know, the, the, developers you can just keep adding to it and adding to it and adding to it and then doing all kinds of promotions inside the game and you know the the surprise boxes and what have you and collecting lots of money from from selling uh, new outfits and new spaceships and new race cars and what have you it's it's amazing to me actually is it is it crazy to look at how dynamic of an environment it's become to market in with the advent of social media and the internet and everything else coming in how do you approach that because i i look at you as one of the true geniuses in marketing because you are willing to take the chance if you're not willing to take the chance you're not going to get where you want to be but you have to take the chance that's the risk you got to put something in the middle but now looking at this do you truly believe anybody can make it or do you think that uh it's a little closed off because of all the barriers of entry now well, no, I think I think it's still a great industry because anybody with a great idea can still develop a game and can you know maybe it starts small, but right. as we talked, it can grow and grow and grow and become uh, a, a a real icon in the in the in the industry, you know. And I, by the way, I am a little bit involved. I, I'm still chairman of a 3D printing company called Mixed Dimensions, mm-hmm. and guess what? Our largest audience is right now our largest revenue source: video game players who want to who create a warrior in a game with his weapons and his outfits and what have you or uh, a spaceship in star trek and they customize it they want a purple constellation it's crazy with our software they click on it and we will 3d print it for them in various sizes and very high quality resin uh full color and ship it to them for a price and uh that's we're not a big we're a startup so you know we're doing what's uh, the name of the company and i'm gonna go on there what's the name of it? <laughs> yeah you should it's called mixed dimensions mixed so dimensions. The, and the idea is we're turning uh we're turning bits into atoms and uh so we can turn your your spaceship your spaceship you created in your game into a physical model that you'll have on your desk so lots of people like that idea i don't know if you saw this but it's already come out that coca-cola is going to be hosting content concerts in the metaverse does that surprise you i mean that's wild it it doesn't surprise me but i had not heard it yeah Yeah, that's wild i mean that, that, that they're already making a huge stake in that do you see that becoming obviously a viable entity in the short run or in the long run oh i think that'll be a that's going to be a hit Right, right out the gate the beginning i would think you know and one of the other things that's 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 going to happen of course is the inclusion of other products in video games i mean it's happened already Same. obviously yeah. but you're going to see a lot more of that as the as the video game itself whether it's an online game completely or what have you uh they're going to now be carrying uh advertisers for other products in there and you want you may not even notice them you know you're driving your race car down and you see the shell sign on the on the side of the road or what have you but it, that's all going to provide extra income to the video game makers I have to ask you, because, you know, because people will want to know, are we in a simulation now, Tom, that you know of? Can you neither confirm nor deny that we're in a, are we in a simulation now? 
<laughs> no, thank God we're not yet in a simulation. Right. It could happen any day now. <laughs> it's crazy. It, it is knocking on the door. And I'm sure you've heard that from some people like, what yes, is going yeah. on? Where is it yeah. going? You know, how do you answer them? <laughs> just the way I just did. It's, it's not happening yet, but it could any, any, any week now. <laughs> do you fear that? Like you could become like the product of your own creation, you know? Oh boy. Uh, no, I'm, I'm too old. You know, I'm a, too old to be afraid of anything like that. I I say the same thing, believe it or not. I'm like, hopefully I'll be long gone by the time that happens. So believe me, I'm right behind you. But you have to you have to reflect back, and I know you're doing great work now on on the opportunity to to get involved in this. People need to understand the gaming industry when you got into it wasn't what it is now, it wasn't even close, as we touched on earlier. But does it surprise you what a hold it's had and and all the different documentaries and different things that you've gotten to participate in through the years? You know, you probably have to be like, How did this happen? How is this my life? Uh, a, a little bit, yeah. I mean, when I'm uh, going back, uh, what five or six years now, I, when Blake Harris came to me and he said, "Hey, I want to do a book on your battle against Nintendo, and I'm going to call it Console Wars." And I said, "Gee, that's very interesting, Blake. There's probably 200 people in the world who care." Yeah. And he said, "No, you're wrong. There's hundreds of thousands who care." And of course, he turned out to be correct, and I turned out to be wrong on that. And it was a lot of fun working with him on the book and the documentary. And there's been other documentaries, obviously, right, yeah. on the video game industry that are terrific, and I really enjoy enjoy that. And and yeah, to your to where we started this conversation, when I sit with my friends with from Sega from years ago. I mean, we're having a reunion soon in the fall. It's amazing. Uh, and when I talk to Al Nielsen or, or Diane Fernassier or Madeline Canapa Schroeder or Ellen Beth Van Buskirk or Michael and Christine Risley, we, we're in shock over how this industry has grown since we, since we left it. And by the way, one of the other things we did that doesn't, again, get mentioned that much, Michael Lean reminded me of this just the other day. We did a lot to get females to play video games. Yeah. And in fact, she just sent me one of the commercials we did directed at the girl audience, if you will. And it was really pretty good. It was a pretty good commercial. And we did get a lot of females to play video games. And as you know, now the mobile world is dominated by ladies playing mobile games. hundred percent. And I, you know, I, I look back and I think, you know, there's been so many great pioneers that have done, done so much great work now with the advent of woke culture and everything else coming into gaming. Do you think that that's a bad thing and it kind of diminishes the things that you guys did and in, in so many different folks before you to, to prop up those communities? No, I just think it's another, it's just another uh, avenue. You know, it's another direction genre people are, are taking and i think the stuff that we did is still gonna resonate and be very popular with whether it's young girls or or older women uh you know so i you know i just think the whole industry is just it's dynamic it's growing so fast and and in so many different directions it's just terrific we've seen the push for so many sequels in hollywood everything's a sequel do you think it's a mistake that so many games especially in the gaming community have resorted to sequels now well, it depends how good the product yeah, is. Yeah, always. <laughs> you know, I, by the way, I loved the Sonic movie, the first movie. Yeah. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the next one to see what they do with it. And I hope that it's of the same caliber as the first one was. Uh, you know, we, I think we did a good job on sequels with, when I was at Sega with Sonic the Hedgehog, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we, the Sonic 2 was my favorite game and even Sonic 3 was pretty darn good. And then something happened. And maybe it was be it wasn't because I left, but it was because a lot of the you know Naka and Oshima and and Mark Cerny and some of the guys who had worked on on the Sonic Two and what have you left the company, and a new group took over, and and so there was that period of time where the Sonic games that were coming out weren't that good; they just weren't as playable, if you will. But I do think under the current regime, they've gotten back on track and they're and they're really good again you know so the current team seems to be doing a good job again yeah, I think it's always uh, difficult today because you have to keep everything in mind. It's not like it once was. There could be a movie. There could be a Netflix deal. There could be something on it. You know what I mean? You have to keep all these different things in mind when you write out a storyline and, and when you design a game. And I think, you know, we're seeing that now with more games being made into movies than ever before, right? It's so right. crazy. Does that surprise you, all the money flowing into Hollywood from all the games? Well, it, not since there, there have been some successes. I mean, there was a, a time when the taking a game character or, or, and trying to turn it into a movie wasn't working very well. 
you know, most of them were failing. So it's only been recent that we've had some had some real successes. And of course, I still think the be- the best of them all was the, was the Sonic one. That was yeah. The, yeah, that was the number one gross box office movie for a couple months in a row uh, uh, last year, year before. So uh, that worked really well. Some of them have not worked. Yeah, we've seen it go the other way where it was, you know, a Batman movie turned into a game and we've seen that a hundred times and there's there's plenty of content out there on YouTube about some of the disasters that have that have come out. But but there's there's been very few dictating the other way until recently. And that that kind of surprised me because obviously there's there's a little bit of a risk and there hasn't been a great track record record but i think you know now that they're starting to establish one they're willing to pour more money into it so well i I hope so i hope they continue to make good movies they're good uh, obviously good video games first but fairly good movies if you could make one into a movie and market it what would it be that hasn't been done yet (laughs) oh Oh, that's a tough question for me you you know you, you it, the problem is I get into some of my old favorites and I'm not sure that they'd make good movies. You know, I love to echo the dolphin, for example, yeah. how the heck you can make a movie out of that. It's I love to Jim and Earl. How do you make yeah. a movie out of that? <laughs> the hardest one that was great would be something like, like a, like a donkey Kong country, which wasn't yours, but, but no. you know, would have been an interesting one. Yeah. Uh, that That's a great game. That yeah. would be a good one. Castlevania is one that comes to mind in a full length feature, you know, something oh, that's a good, that's a, that's an interesting idea. So actually. that one would yeah. be, interesting uh but i think that there's so many like you said that are unique characters that you guys have come up with over the years and i know sonic was one that you were deeply involved with in marketed uh, could you ever put a dollar amount on how much sonic was marketed and if you could what would it be oh gosh i don't i don't remember you mean how much we spent on marketing it? well into the millions Oh, many. Yeah. Back then well, even. Many, many, many millions. Yeah, absolutely. Because remember, we used it as the spokesperson character for the whole brand. And so an awful lot of the advertising we did featured Sonic, not just to sell the Sonic game, but no. again, as we said earlier, to sell the Sega brand. And to that time, Tom, what I was, what I found interesting was I don't think Mario was as big of a face of, of Nintendo as you made Sonic right out of the gate. Right. You know, you guys made because obviously people don't people forget one of the, the the sneaky things you guys did was when when Mario came out, it was part of Duck Hunt. It was a dual deck and then it was a singular deck in some boxes, if I remember correct, Tom. But you guys went in heavy with Sonic right out of the gate and you said, this is going to be our guy that had never really been done. And we've seen it done every console since. Yeah. Well, and as you I'm sure you know the story when when I suggested that we put Sonic in with the hardware, the the board of directors oh, in Japan thought I was crazy. Lost their mind. I mean, yeah, why would you do that? You know, we 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 put some other crummy title in with the hardware, <laughs> but don't put your best title in with the hardware cuz you'll lose that that very profitable software game sale that could occur separate from the hardware. So anyway, but it worked very, very well, obviously. (laughs) You have to be a master at overcoming things, and I'm sure you're far better at couching things than I am. When you're coming, when you're overcoming barriers in business and in life, what suggestions do you have for people out there when, because I know you've probably gotten these rooms a hundred times with Sega Japan and you just want to probably jump out a window. How did, what, see, what little cheat codes did you use to overcome some of these hurdles? Well, I, I was just very persistent, I think is the, the main thing. And, and, I, and I stuck to my guns and, and, and I, I just kind of had this feeling they were wrong, you know, and I've had that same feeling on many of the brands I've worked on in my life. Uh, I, you know, going way back to when I started in marketing and working on and the developed Flintstones vitamins, the doctors at miles laboratory said, what are you crazy? You want to do a vitamin after a cartoon character that's just been taken off primetime TV and it's now on Saturday morning. I said, yeah, because it's better that it's on Saturday morning now. Or when I worked on Barbie and, and and Barbie had declined dramatically and people said, what are you talking about? You want to spend all this R and D money and, and tooling money to make more Barbie dollars and more accessories and a big house for her to be in. What are you, nuts? The brand's Mm -hmm. declining. I said, yeah, no, that's what we're going to (laughs) do. So it's having confidence to just do what you believe in. Yeah, it's hard to do, though. Why is is it so difficult? I always say, you know, it's it's hard to convince owners and board members sometimes the, the, the common sense solutions. You know, to break into new markets, you have to break through, and they don't fully understand that sometimes. And overcoming those hurdles is tremendously difficult sometimes, and some people feel they don't have the strength to overcome them or they're worried about losing their job, but that's where the good stuff is because that's where 
the innovation is. And that's where the change is in an industry. Why do you think so many owners and high ranking officials fear that it's not for threat of their job? Why can't they, they grab some of these marketers, these junior marketers out there, Tom, by the hand and say, this is my champion too. I don't know why. Uh, you know what? And that's the, the same kind of characteristic that a lot of the entrepreneurs of startups have that are getting funded by venture capital in Silicon Valley or Boston or wherever. Those guys stick to their guns. They have an idea. They know they're right. And they will just keep going no matter what, you know, they, it, sometimes for a startup uh, entrepreneur, it's really hard for them hard. to get financing. I, by the way, I am a VC at Alsop Louis Venture Capital, yeah. and it's really hard for some of these startups to get financing. But a lot of the better VCs say, hey, you know what? We're going to take a risk. If we don't take a risk, we're never going to grow another large company. Mm. And, uh, and so I like that mindset a lot. And it is the mindset of an entrepreneur. And it, and it was the mindset that I think I had as a mainly a marketing guy. Yeah. And now, Obviously, I want to get to the new stuff you're doing and you're working on. I know it, it's awesome. I do just want to ask, does the streaming stuff, uh, you know, blow your mind at how, where it's all going, just the streaming and the audio that's blown into the industry, not just in the gaming community, but the way it's taking everything over in media? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's absolutely, uh, I'm, I, I'm a duck out of water now, to tell you the truth. I mean, I- oh, Of course. We all this are. Is a, I'm with a you. Great new world uh, that I don't understand, and I, I'm I'm thankful there's a lot of young guys, who, who, gals who are figuring this out because I don't think I could uh, anymore. It's crazy with Prime coming in and Netflix and in the yeah. money starting to move towards the streaming networks. Uh, I mean, I, this is something not everybody could have predicted, but uh, I think COVID exacerbated it. But uh, streaming's taking totally over. I mean, how long do you think cable will last? Oh, no, I know. I think Cable's in real trouble. Well, I'm, you know, my, again, one of my other old, old brands, He-Man Masters of the Universe, now on Netflix. Yeah, you know? amazing. <laughs> Spending millions and millions to develop it just for Netflix, not for NBC or ABC or CBS, but for Netflix. It's it, The question is, will they ever be able to make it into a movie that's viable? That's the question. <laughs> They've always struggled with that with He-Man. It's a tough character yeah, to make a don't, movie. Don't cast Dolph Lundgren. No, no, no. And the set pieces would be ridiculous. I don't know how you'd do it. Uh, but yeah, uh, streaming's coming in hot and heavy. Now, I know you're doing the VC stuff. I, I, I got that much from uh, your bio, but uh, the but now you're into the educational stuff mainly yeah. that's your big push what do you got going on now what's new oh gosh it's stuff that would probably bore you to death, no no i'm but, okay let's uh, let's hear it okay so one of the things I, i'm involved in is called teach the world foundation sure and uh it focused it was started by a former executive vice president of Marriott, who happened to have been born in Pakistan, educated here in the United States, in fact, at Harvard. And, uh, you know, there's all these poor kids in Southwest Asia, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, who aren't getting a decent education. They live in the slums. And in fact, the girls, as you know, in Afghanistan, weren't allowed to be educated at all. No. A similar situation in parts of Pakistan, too. And so anyway, this guy is, has started a, uh, where we're, we're opening one-room schools with t uh, female teachers, largely, who, are, who obviously speak the local language, but mm. were educated in an uh, English-speaking country, either the UK, Australia, or the United States. And then we get them back to, well, we were in Afghanistan. And one of the problems, Oof. of course, was when we when we heard that uh, the U.S. military was going to move out last uh, last May, we said, oh, my God, we got to get our teachers out because the Taliban will come back in and they'll kill them. Of course. So we managed to get everybody out by by May. Okay. Uh, a lot of people didn't. And I don't understand why they didn't, because it was pretty obvious what was going to happen. And it is happening, obviously. But we're still in Pakistan. And we're getting great results from curriculum that's on a tablet in, and solar panels on the roof to recharge the tablets uh, uh, for each day's use. And one teacher for 30 kids. I know that's a lot. It's not a great ratio, but anyway, it's working. And we teach the local language. So if the, the reading, write. So if the local language in Pakistan is Urdu, we teach him to, to read and write Urdu, mm -hmm. but we also teach him English up through about the fifth grade level, and we teach him basic math up through about the fifth grade level. Well, just with that limited amount of education, their lives are so much better. 
Amazing. they can go on and get jobs and and be productive in their in their in their in their country. So we're we're doing it. Uh, we're having great success, by the way. And when we look at the scholar, the how the kids are doing compared to well, a lot of times, there is no government school in the slums in Pakistan. Mm-hmm. There isn't in Karachi or Islamabad. There's no no school that would be worth a darn. But off of these tablets and. Uh, the software we're using uh, for English teaching is called Footsteps to Brilliance, mm-hmm. and it's really fun, really good stuff. And uh, we're we're getting these kids to where they're they're performing really really well. So that's rewarding for me. I like that. I like that we're having success. So we're in Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, the Rohingya camps, and Mali, uh, in Africa. So you know we're growing, but. It's a startup. What made you do it? What was it? Just somebody pitched you, and you you got you you got the feels for it, or was it something near and dear to you? Well, it, no. You remember when I when I left Sega, I went with Knowledge Universe, which right. was financed by Mike Milken and Larry Ellison of Oracle fame. Yeah, and we were our goal was to use technology to improve education. So we did a lot of different things. Did curriculum companies. We did Leapfrog, which we grew to the largest educational toy company in the world. So I could see the impact that that good educational curriculum pr- presented to a child in a fun and interesting way could have on them. I, everybody looks says, oh, gee, the reading scores in the United States never went up. Well, they actually did go up after we introduced the leap pad yeah. and, and we saw a huge improvement in reading scores in the United States. Uh, and it wasn't due to what was going on in the classroom, right. it was due to these products. So, I know it can work, and uh, and I want to encourage it. I'm also on the board of something called Story World, which is also teaching English, uh, largely here in the United States and and uh, Latin American countries. Oh, and a little bit in Asia, uh, not Southwest Asia, but more like China, Asia, and and Japan. So again, teaching, reading, and writing in in English. Uh, and uh, then I talked about mixed dimensions, which yeah. is uh, not. St- really educational other than 3d printing the process in itself is kind of educational i think it's but pretty it, damn cool it's really cool to watch I'll yeah tell you. i think it's pretty damn cool now 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 michael had one of the best quotes in the history of courtrooms tom remember it cash or check how do you <laughs> <laughs> next if it doesn't fit don't it must have quit but but uh, michael is a you know he's a legend for being in the court i mean that guy poof, uh, that's amazing it, it must be you know it must be interesting in so many ways you know people ask me all the time i get to talk to a lot of cool people but you're in some very cool circles is it is it surreal do you pinch yourself or you're like geez i get to be around all these these cool guys in this space even though you know you might feel like it's moving a little bit quicker than you're used to, but it still has to be so exciting to be on the cutting edge of some of this stuff and being able to well, be a part is. of it. And, and, and of course, uh, you know, dealing with, sure. with Michael uh, Milken and Larry Ellison, those are two of the smartest Phenom- people oh, in the yeah. world. Uh, Michael, I still think, is probably the smartest person in the world. He Genius something level. about everything. Yeah. Uh, but also dealing with the, the entrepreneur world out here and a lot of the VCs with the, you know, I get to interact with uh, guys like John Doerr, oh. uh, founder of Kleiner Perkins, or chairman of Kleiner Perkins. I, I did get to interact with steve jobs a bit because when we did leapfrog we were down the street like yeah. literally almost next door to pixar uh so and then the new entrepreneurs you know the mike woods who founded leap leapfrog uh the guys who are doing the doing the startups uh, that are working on new things that i don't understand mm-hmm. at all you know space technology that kind of thing yeah it's very re- it's very rewarding what advice do you give folks that get an opportunity to listen in on some of these circles and as you broke into some of these circles i'm sure you know there, there was a time where you had to take your own advice do you tell them to just sit back and listen pay attention what advice do you give them well, I, I do tell I, I tell people to learn the the industry, learn the history of the industry, whatever it is, because there's always a history, right? There's, whether it's a bad history or a good history, of course. there's always a there's always a history, and become better at that, that or more knowledgeable about that than than anybody else is, so that at least you can carry on a good conversation with the guys who are who are really being successful in it, and I and I think that's a you know a good piece of advice, and then also is yes, get a mentor. I really believe in in finding a mentor and uh, to being a mentor to some degree that you if you can uh i talked a lot about that i think in uh in uh in the 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 Council Wars book it, about how important it was to for me to personally have mentors as I was coming along and then now to be a mentor to others. It's a lost art, right? It's one of the reasons I started the podcast. I feel like the conversation was dying. 
you know, the art of the conversation. And I feel like being a mentor keeps you a little grounded. And if you're able to, whether it's have a podcast or do what you're doing and you can work with a few people, it can be tremendously rewarding. Like I love sitting and having these little one hour conversations or 45 minute conversations with folks because I learn a lot about myself. I learn a little bit about them and I get to walk away. And I said, I had one good structured conversation today. That's great. I'm so glad you're doing that. That's really, I think it's a really lost art. Ter- it is, but that's terrific that you're continuing to do it. Yeah. Too many Don't people stop. like to text and too many people like to, you know, just everything. We we're losing that ability to be the Lord of the living room. You know, it's just, it's like, that's, that doesn't exist. That term doesn't exist anymore. I mean, it no. just, it really doesn't. You have to be a text message commando or something, you know, it's like, that's how it all works, you know, but uh, when I, I will say this about you, uh, you, as someone I, I, I admired from afar, I will tell you, you met every single one of my expectations. When I messaged you, you were tremendously gracious, kind to answer. And I was just like, you were one of the few people, people ask me all the time in the 500 episodes I've done on this show, you know, who I get starstruck by or who would, you know, kind of be a big guest. I would say your name and people would look at me like, like, huh? And I'd be like, listen, just trust me. This is the guy. I'm like, I'm telling you. Uh, I'm, oh, thank you. Oh, That's very cor- kind of you. Of course. And I'm sure you get pitched every idea under the sun and everybody comes to you with everything crazy uh when you're sifting through that stuff how do you do it and still smile that's the crazy thing you know sometimes it's i really look for the the ones that strike me as being completely nuts you know (laughs) the real far out ideas are the ones that are the ones that are most attractive to me now not the ones that are oh i'm going to do another video game and it's going to be just like well if you say just like then i'm not interested right exactly now i have to ask you this before i I let you off the hook Uh, you know i know we'll run long but what when you look out there in the marketplace not just necessarily in gaming who do you see out there doing it right who do you see marketing themselves properly and 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 what games do you see being what consoles do you see being pushed the right way and let you like what they're doing genuinely well again i i i I think i mentioned i'm not really following the industry any longer because i'm so wrapped up in these other things that i that i'm doing the political Uh, answer Tom. it's part it's kind of interesting because part of el sup louis we have jim wimps well, Jim Wims was head of, of Sony for a while. And so he, it, right at the end of my time at, at Sega. So, so I admired Jim a lot and what he did at, at Sony with PlayStation. And then one of the other guys is Jim Ward, who ran Lucas Arts. Right. And, and so, you know, uh, I, I, you love I everyone. work with every day. <laughs> love everyone. <laughs> but there has to be, I mean, has, has there been anyone that you're like, geez, they're really, they're get, they're nailing it. They're crushing it. I mean, Sony comes to mind. I mean, they've done such a great job with yeah. their console. Uh, you have to look at that from afar and admire that. You can't not. Yes, I do. Uh, I do. And I don't know. Uh, I don't know the Microsoft guy, Phil Spencer. I don't yeah. know him. So I can't really comment on that and i and honestly i haven't i I guess i said i haven't played uh microsoft games xbox i went say i I went sega to sony myself so i'm not overly familiar with the microsoft platform (laughs) and what it does i went sega to sony and i'm sure most people did but i was a sega guy when i was coming up i couldn't good for you i couldn't not not root for it it was like it was like the evil empire you loved but they were really good when you got to know them it was like the the ex-girlfriend that was a little crazy i loved sega when it came out it just that was kind of what it said to me in the marketing and that's what i loved about it and it was unapologetic which is something that's kind of lost today and that's what i loved about it as well well yeah i agree with you we sure tried hard well listen i i love getting this time with you it's amazing uh you know i don't know that you're open to any mentorships or or having anybody but where can people reach you if they do want to get in touch well you have my email so we could that's a good start that's a good start so yeah uh, you know, it's Tom Kalinsky at alsop louiecom All right, I know if you were making it public, okay. All right, hey. And and you know, I get a lot of uh, LinkedIn uh, connections as well. Uh, you like that platform? Uh, uh, yes, I do. I, I, I like it because I could look up people's background and yeah. what they did before. <laughs> yeah. I like, I like LinkedIn too. I think it's an un, I think it's an unpolished gem. I'm a lunatic on LinkedIn. Everybody knows that, but I, I do it to kind of, it's kind of a mundane, boring platform. I like to have fun with it and I like to yeah. shake the bushes with it. And everybody yeah. in my industry kind of knows that I'm just one of those guys that does it that way. Mm-hmm. But I'd love to invite you out to Vegas. If you're ever here, Tom, I'd love to have you in studio. I mean, anytime well, I, I'd like to get there, you know, one of Elsa, 
up Louis Investments is Meow Wolf, which okay. is opened a facility in Vegas and it's getting really good traction. It's a crazy place. You ought to go. You'd love it. Go through it. It's a, it's like all the crazy art you've ever imagined in the world. Only you, you enter the art, you become part of the art. You interact with yeah, the art. I wrote it down. And you walk in through a refrigerator. Oh, it's in there. It's in the, the, yeah, I know where you're, I know that I know where thing. Yeah. 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 I know what you mean now. I know where that is. Yeah. I, I listen, I'd love to have you if you'd ever be willing to come out. I'll try to do that. Hell, well, listen, don't hang up. I just want to end this. I'm going to end the recording. I appreciate everybody. I appreciate all the sponsors. They're all listed down below. Guys, special thanks to Tom for taking the time. I know his time's tremendously valuable. Thank you. And I hopefully you'll come back out and come on anytime, Tom. I'd love to have you. My pleasure. I'd love to talk to you again sometime Absolutely. in the future. Check out the sponsors. They're all listed down below. We're going to sign out.